My name is Daryl Clark. Thanks for being with us tonight. Now, the World Bank has indicated it will no longer provide financial guarantee for private independent power producers which want to invest in Ghana's energy sector. Country Director Henry Kerali thinks Ghana has had enough of the financial support in the sector from the World Bank. He stated this in an interview with my colleague George Yafe. That the power purchase agreements all have what we call take or pay. You either take the electricity or you pay for it. If you don't take it, you still have to pay for it. So this is the challenge that Ghana is facing. When you have an oversupply of electricity that is not being used, the country still has to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we would try to discourage. And we hope that the government will be able to find ways and means to reduce that risk of paying for electricity that it is not using. The analogy here about the, the fish in the soup is that maybe in Ghana, if it's too much, we can export the rest. So what's the big deal, one would ask? I think the big deal is whether the price that you're exporting is sustainable in the region. Um, the export price in the region is 9 to 11 cents, from our understanding. And the tariff levels in Ghana are more than that, significantly more, from 13 to 16 cents. So if you're going to export, it means that Ghana will have to subsidize some of that export in order to uh, be able to meet the market levels of tariff. So at nine cents, you would have to subsidize maybe four or five cents. And this is not, it is not uh, good economics for Ghana to be subsidizing electricity being used in other countries. But if the government can find a way to uh, discuss, renegotiate, reschedule, whatever it is, uh, that they need to do with the independent power producers in order to reduce the tariff levels, that would be very welcome news. All right, so let's get some analysis on this uh, from the executive director of the Kumasi Institute of Technology and, uh, and Environment, Ishmael Ejekumhene, on the World Bank's new decision and the possible implications for the economy. Thanks for your time tonight. So. Uh, first of all, I'm just wondering, what does the World Bank mean when it says it has withdrawn financial guarantees for private companies in the energy sector? Well, basically, when the World Bank provides guarantees, they are telling whoever you're borrowing money from that they are in support of whatever transaction is going on between the borrower and the government of Ghana. You recall that when we were going for the car power agreement, car power insisted that it is a guarantee provided by the state, which eventually I think the GMPC had to guarantee. So basically what the World Bank does is to provide some, almost like an insurance to say that, look, whatever happens, we are part of this and we, we provide the cover. So that's what it means. So if without that, it means a risk is high and people are most likely going to end up borrowing at a higher rate without any World Bank guarantee. Okay, so tell us more about what has been the impact of this financial uh, or financial guarantee, yes, on the uh, generation of power in the country over the years. Well, like I was explaining, uh, you see, once you get a sovereign guarantee, which is the state providing a guarantee to say that the nation undertakes to, to pay in the event that ECG, which is normally the offtake guy, is unable to pay. That should suffice. But for the international market, if, if you have a World Bank guarantee, you are most likely going to be able to get people to listen to you and offer you more flexible terms. So most of the IPPs that, come in, that came in with World Bank guarantee means that World Bank guarantee actually facilitated their getting access to credit. But what it means is that if it's been withdrawn, then people will have to go and, and struggle themselves for those funds. But I guess what we need to be alluding our minds to is the reason why they are redrawing this. They, they've said that we have excess capacity in their minds and we have contracted power plants that are a bit too expensive. And for that reason, they are unable to, we are unable to 
sell excess capacity to the, the sub region. I guess that's the bottom line. We stuck with plants that are too expensive that if you want to get into the power pool, probably your generation will not be dispatched. So it, it, it means that ultimately we need to find a way of bringing the cost of power down. But now that the World Bank is pulling out and not providing guarantees, people are going to borrow at more expensive rates. Okay, and so while you speak about that, you spoke about some gains we've made. Can we leverage on the gains by exporting the excess power through the West Africa Power Pool? Well, yes and no, um, in the sense that, yes, because the, the facility and infrastructure exists, and if you're able to cut uh, an appropriate deal with, because you can't just wake up or get up to sell power into the power pool. You need to have somebody who will be your uptaker whether it's going to Nigeria, Benin, or Togo. But then you face the competition in the, in the pool, and technically they will dispatch, or anybody who knows how much power is generated within the sub-region is going to go in for the, the one that offers the best deal. So yes, yes, because uh, we have the infrastructure to export, but no, because as if you recall what the, the World Bank uh, country manager said, our prices, and we, we've known that even before he said that our tariffs or our um, unit cost is slightly more expensive than what you get. And if you have the Ivorians who, for example, are able to come in and bail us out when we uh, we need urgent supply of power, they are always, we are, we import from Cote d'Ivoire at a cheaper rate than when we self-generate. So, yes, the market exists, but any, anybody who wants to buy power will check what else is available before they decide to contract your power. So we urgently need to bring the cost down. Otherwise, we, would be, we wouldn't be able to access the power pool. Uh, how, how else do you think the economy will be affected as a result of this withdrawal? Um, immediately, I can't see uh, any, any drastic impact because we already seem to have excess capacity for the foreseeable future, like for the next, uh, if you consider the fact that we still have, we, we, we need about 2,000 megawatts and have about 3,600. If you take out those plants that are very soon going to be retired because they are more than 20 years, we still should be fine for another three, four years, barring any, any problem with Akosombo Dam. But we can't relax. So, any new IPP that is going into the market we cannot count on the World Bank's support. But if the government is saying that they're also not going to do any sole sourcing, then it's, it's interesting times because we're going to be able to get the best value for money. And uh, ultimately, the, the, the investors would want to come in. So once we cap our prices and say we can't pay beyond a certain amount, you either come in or you keep your investment. I think if we go in for competitive bidding, we still have people and coming in to build the plans that we need to keep our systems running forever and ever. Okay, a quick one before we let you go. Now, government has indicated that it's going to invest uh, more in renewable energy. Now, that act was passed six years ago. How can we leverage on that? Say that again. I was saying that government has said that it's going to invest more in renewable energy. I was indicating that that act was passed six years ago. How can we leverage on that as a country? Well, it's, it's one thing passing the act, which sends the right signal. But another thing, making sure that um, the environment is, is, is right for, for private people, because ultimately we're still looking at the private entities to come in. We, we passed the act, but there are other, some mechanisms in the act that are still not, we haven't fully operationalized them. We need to very quickly make sure that uh, the feeding tariffs, for example, is good enough for people to find it attractive. Uh, the utilities were supposed to have what we call purchase obligations that says that VRA, for example, should have a certain percentage of its generation in renewables. And then there is this almighty renewable energy fund that we still haven't established because that's what a lot of private entities are going to rely on to borrow at affordable rates to be able to build some of the plants. If you want the private people to go to our traditional banks, 
uh, you can borrow at 25%, 30%, or even 20%, or even 15%, and have a very solid business case for renewables. So we need to make sure that all the structures we put, we put in the act are working. Uh, recently, the government has also introduced things like the reverse metering and the rooftop project. We need to make sure that they are actually working and not, they are not just policy intentions. All right. Because we need to make them work. Otherwise, the renewables will also become an okay. illusion. All right. Thanks very much for your time. That was Executive Director of Kite, Ishmael Ejekum Hene. Well, the World Bank has been speaking on another important subject, that is the IMF program. And its director, country director, has confirmed that the IMF is in discussions with Ghana over extension of the fund program. This earlier confirms reports by Joy Business that government is likely to extend the program, which should have ended in April 2018. It is, however, not clear for now whether the program will be extended to December next year or 2019. The move Joy Business understands has been influenced by the IMF's concerns that Ghana may not be able to implement critical reforms before the original completion uh, date of April 2018. Now, the World Bank country director tells Joy Business they are waiting for a final agreement between the two parties. From our perspective, we always look for a sustainable uh, program. And my understanding is that that is indeed the objective for both the government and the IMF, to come to an agreement on a sustainable uh, fiscal framework that can uh, be, that can boost growth, that can help Ghana to come out of the current debt levels and can also help Ghana to fight poverty as, as it stands. So we are very much in support of an agreement that will be sustainable in the medium term for Ghana, not just for the IMF or the World Bank. And this agreement is looking as at the fact that didn't stay in because I remember when there were meetings there, there were, there were agreements that things are looking like, let's let's look at extending so that we won't end up having a crash program. And that's what the bank would also respect, right? We definitely would respect uh, an agreement between the IMF and the, board and the, and the government of Ghana. Mm. Uh, this is the role that the World Bank plays, which is to support uh, the agreements, the IMF program uh, in particular, and we will continue to do so uh, as and when uh, the program is revised and agreed. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it might come with any problems for the economy? There are some who also think that uh, there might be some sharp revisions again and it will come with their own shocks uh, uh, to the economy. Uh, what do you make of those school of thought or, or perceptions? We don't anticipate any sharp changes, as, uh, as you've mentioned. Uh, we do anticipate something along the lines that the government has already included in its budget. Uh, obviously, there will be a period of monitoring and seeing how well the government uh, performs in achieving the targets that it set for itself uh, in, the prog in the budget that was read in March. So I don't expect that there will be any significant deviations uh, from that. Obviously, there will be some adjustments mm -hmm. in order for both sides to reach an understanding. But nevertheless, I do not expect that there will be significant deviations. Mm -hmm. We are moving on to the insurance industry where we are learning that the National Insurance Commission is saying that all insurance companies in the country have met the new minimum requirement by the commission except for one firm. The NIC says it has ordered the said firm to meet the requirement of phaser consequences by the middle of the year. Insurance Commissioner Lydia Bauer speaking with Joy Business said the industry regulator is working assiduously to strengthen the insurance sector in the country. National Insurance Commission, NIC, last year received the minimum capital requirements for insurance and reinsurance companies to 15 and 40 million cities. Per the new directive, insurance and reinsurance companies are expected to adjust their minimum operating capital to meet the revised figures by the end of the year. In an interview with Joy Business at the sidelines of the 10th graduation ceremony of the Ghana Insurance College in Accra, Commissioner of the National Insurance Commission, Larry Bauer, disclosed that the recapitalization process ended last year with one firm yet to meet the new requirement. It ended in 2016. 
them. And all the companies have met the minimum uh, you know, uh, uh, capital requirement, except for one company. We are encouraging it to still, if they don't, we're giving them up to the mid-year uh, 2017. If they don't, then we'll take, we'll take uh, uh, remedial action. We have uh, uh, mechanisms in place to take care of the policyholders. The ceremony was also attended by key insurance stakeholders and managers of the various insurance institutions in the country. Some of the graduates shared their thoughts with Joy Business. The insurance industry, most people are not embracing it because I, I think the, the, the college or the body need to, the insurance body need to really uh, make a lot of awareness so that people will really appreciate what they are buying insurance for. This is not the first insurance course I've undertaken. I've gone to the, um, the West African Insurance Institute in the Gambia. But comparing that to the Ghana Insurance College, I can say that Ghana Insurance College is outstanding when it comes to the insurance uh, uh, courses or professionalism. The college was established to train professionals in the sector and to help improve insurance services in the country. Well, insurance expert Edgar Redu has been exploring the impact of the revised requirements on operations of insurance in the sector. He thinks it offers enough opportunities to improve the industry. All right, you're watching Business Live. We'll fix that sound issue and we'll come back to that story if we can. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Business Live Today. Welcome back to Business Live. Time to do a discussion on the stocks. I'm joined in the studio by Betha Atubiga. She's a stocks analyst. Thanks for your time this Thank evening. I don't know where to begin from this because there's so much happening uh, yeah. around the world. Let's, let's first start with the stocks. Okay. What's been the update over the past few weeks? We've not had you here in a while. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, last week, the stock market did very well. We saw the volumes of share actually increase by over 100%. Um, the, the value of shares increased over 100%, and the volumes also went up significantly comparing it to previous week. And the uh, year-to-day returns for the major indices also um, has been a bit uh, volatile, let me put it that way. We've seen ups and downs, some marginal declines, uh, looking at the average returns of these major um, indices on the stock market. The financial stock index, uh, we all know, was about 19%, but as of close of Friday, it's about 15% a year to the return. And mm -hmm. then the composite index has come down to about 11% a year to the return. We wouldn't say um, that means the market is coming down, but we've seen some equities still do very well. Some equities have also declared dividends. EcoBank declared a dividend of 83 pesos about 82, 83 pesos per share, which is lower than what they paid for the last financial year. And it also made some good profit. So it's good, but I'm sure investors were expecting more. But they shouldn't forget that last year was one of the most challenging years for financial, the financial sector and other sectors in the, in the Ghanaian economy. And then some other equities, uh, equities to have declared or released their financials, which are in positive. Now, but there's one thing that's also affecting them slightly. I don't know, probably it's going to have um, a two-sided way effect on the performance of the share on the exchange. That's the impairment cost. Most of them are actually recording very high impairment costs, like Carl Bank. Uh, Carl Bank did not even declare dividends. It's one of the most liquid equities on the stock market. Mm. And at the AGM, um, they said we should expect about one CD 20 pesos. The, the share price is way low. Investors should expect more. The equity can go up to about one CD 20 pesos. But for my last, like if I could remember very well, when the, uh, in 2013 is when Carl Bank was above one CD and it came down to above one CD and we've seen that um, stability between 70, 90 pesos uh, per, per share. But it's not like it doesn't come above one CD. Sometimes it goes to about, about one CD or a little above one CD. And that's what's happening like for the past two weeks. That's what so, we've had. So what, what's our pick for this week? Uh, we're still looking at uh, BOPP. Mm. Uh, BOPP is one of the equities that we're looking out for. Uh, it's done so well this year. 
and even if you look at today's market, it's happened to have gained four pesos again. It started the year way lower than uh, its current price. That's three cities, 29 pesos. Last week, it closed at three cities, 25 pesos. But is one of the equities we're looking at. Um, Ecobank used to be, it's still part of the stock picks, though, though it has lost so much. Um, I remember last week, within the week, it lost about 14 pesos in a single and what, day. what contributed to that? Well, like I said, dividends uh, pay out. The dividends they pay out to investors um, has gone down year on year basis comparing to previous year. And sometimes to is just the normal dynam dynamics on the stock exchange. That's what um, happens. And it can some, sometimes even a trade a trade of hundred shares on the stock market in a particular equity can bring the share price down significantly. Uh, but today we saw Ecobank trade very huge volumes of shares, over 200,000 shares, as well as ETI also trading at over 200 shares okay. on the stock market. I want to pick your thoughts on a very important development last week where uh, workers of CPC, the cocoa processing company, were asking that uh, the company delist from the stock exchange because they were not performing too well. <laughs> what's, what's your opinion on that, if I may well, ask? CPC, um, it's, not in, uh, it's not an equity that I usually recommend to investors because CPC has is one peso or two pesos and you know a drop is like 50 percent loss and a plus one peso is about 50 or 100 percent gain but the equity generally is one of the inactive let me put it that way inactive equities on the market and if the workers are actually saying that they should be list from the exchange it's probably because we don't see much performance or improvement uh, in the equity on the stock market. It's, it's not, um, I, I don't want to say, <laughs> it's not an attractive equity. Let me put it that way. Wow. It's not an attractive equity. It's not an equity uh, that usually returns significantly to investors. Probably in a day's trade, we see it add up 50% uh, to investors' capital, but that is not sustainable. And the uh, equity, if it should delist, probably... Um, it's not a bad idea, but in the long term, we always hope for the best since okay. the stock market Let, is Let's do a quick discussion on developments in France. Everybody's talking about the Macron win and mm. the steady euro. Uh, how do you expect that to wrap on the city or Ghana's economy for that matter? Well, you know, um, it generally, stock markets, we have um, the efficient ones. And we have the ones that are not efficient and the semi-efficient ones. Now, the efficient ones, uh, that's especially the the other markets like the New York Stock Exchange and other. When certain developments come or when there's a change in government, it has significant impact on the general economy, okay? And mostly if the person has um, like huge like people supporting or most people are in support of the person because of the person's track records or what the person is capable of doing, then you see that positive impact taking place. And like France, uh, you can see that almost everyone, even before the election, people were <laughs> like he was going, he went, well, going to win. Yes, to win. to win. And this is something that's positive. It's not unlike um, what Donald happened. The Donald Trump situation, situation where, where we saw a lot of people protesting and all that. And you saw what happened within that period. We saw the dollar actually go down on so many markets. And um, well, that's because these economies are more efficient than the Ghanaian market. I'm not expecting a significant impact on uh, our local markets. Local currency. Yeah. We'll continue yeah. that discussion after the program. Thanks sure. very much. Thank you very much. Better to be glad. I could Thank try my you. French, can't I? <laughs> well, uh, moving on to our interview of the day, and more investors are interested in partnering government with this one district, one factory policy. That's according to Senior Minister Yawasaf Mafo. This came to light during the recent non deal roadshow led by Vice President Dr. Baumia and Finance Minister Ken Furiata, which took them to London, uh, New York, and Boston in the US. The Senior Minister tells Joy Business most of them want to discuss or focus rather on agriculture. Interview of the day. It appears our message is sinking. And it appears from what they themselves have heard, read, and how they've assessed Ekufua, those various statements, they are very comfortable with the direction of Ghana today. And I think we are happy. Have we seen any commitments already or as early days yet in terms of uh, the fact that uh, what you've sold to them, they are responding to it? They are responding. A number of them want to visit Ghana within the next week or two. 
and that itself is a positive. They ask whether we'll be back by a particular date. Why are you asking? Say, we want to follow up. We want to visit. We want to discuss further. We want to discuss with various sector ministers. So we must go home and send the message to our sector ministers to also be that welcoming find time and discuss these investment opportunities. I think the signs are extremely positive. Interview of the day. And that's it for Business Live. As always, thanks for your company. We'll see you tomorrow.